11 underrated slasher horror movies that need more appreciation. The slasher subgenre captured massive hype from the late 70s till the end of the bloody 80s. Although it didn't end there, this was a significant era in Western cinema that saw the emergence of movies like Halloween, Black Christmas, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre some of the earliest classic gems. They created a benchmark that filmmakers would later draw from to keep the vibrant slasher genre alive. One of its primary influences is drawn from Italian giallo films. Besides movies that generated popular figures like Jason, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers, some criminally underrated slasher movies did not receive adequate attention. This video will bring a few of these movies to the spotlight. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. American Gothic 1988. Six friends who fly out on a weekend getaway suddenly find themselves with engine trouble. They are forced to land on a remote island where they seek shelter. Here they encounter Ma, Pa, and their children, an eccentric family living on the island's backwoods. What begins as a simple act of hospitality soon turns into a race of survival as the friends disappear one by one. With an Academy Award-winning duo like Rod Steger and Yvonne DiCarlo, this movie is sure to be one of the best. It draws heavily from other teen slasher films of the decade while establishing its own twists. The plot is original, with humor incorporated with the intense horror. Furthermore, director John Huff does a flawless job of the character sketches, especially Ma and Pa, whose character dynamism is established during the climax. Additionally, it portrays the parody of man's interpretation of religion with a dark atmosphere. The cinematography is decent with slightly gritty special effects, and it slightly evokes an overall eerie vibe. It is a nasty satire on traditionally conservative family values brought out through a sharp script, and it's a movie that's worth your time. <laughs> Curtain 1983. Samantha Sherwood, who has worked with renowned director Jonathan Stryker on all his major films, assumes she automatically plays his latest character, Audra. He advises her to conduct some research where she has to admit herself in an asylum. She agrees to this, not knowing his true intention. After a series of mishaps, she returns to the house where the role's auditions are occurring. Suddenly, the young women auditioning begin disappearing one by one. Is this the doing of Samantha Sherwood, or is there someone else behind the mask resembling an old hag? Unlike most slasher flicks of its time, predominantly aimed at teenage audiences, director Richard Kupka aimed this film mostly at adults. With his sleek direction and entertaining plot, it stands out from other 80s horror films. It is a well-paced movie with an abundance of violence, but not particularly gory. It contains exceptionally thrilling twists and likable characters, who viewers feel sorry for when they die. Kupka focuses on the atmosphere and development of characters in this film. Besides Samantha Egger's applauding performance, the entire film also has a lingering theme of Hollywood's unfortunate perils and how actors begin getting exploited or mistreated with age. Overall, this is a well-crafted, genuinely creepy movie. Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, 1986. After Henry is released from prison, he and his companion from jail, Otis, use an extermination job as a front to commit a series of violent murders. Henry forms an unlikely bond with Otis's sister, Becky, who moves in with them. Things soon begin getting out of hand when the dynamic among the trio is disturbed. 
Director John McNaughton loosely based this film on real-life serial killers Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole. Due to its portrayal of heavy violence, it faced a lot of controversy upon its initial release. Despite being a biopic of sorts, it neither glorifies nor denounces the protagonist's actions. Instead, it has a unique execution style that simply observes and lays them out before the viewers, leaving its moral aspect open to interpretation. It is a unique film that presents its storyline in a realistic setting without sugarcoating it, with Michael Rooker delivering one of his best performances as Henry. It is indeed a different approach from conventional 80s slasher flicks, but exhilarating and thrilling nonetheless, and a must-watch for slasher fans. April Fool's Day, 1986. A group of college students gather on an island to celebrate their final year in a mansion owned by one of their cousins, heiress Muffy St. John. When some sinister events begin occurring, the students wonder if they are real or all part of a cruel April Fool's prank. Even though the heiress is the only one who knows the truth, is she behind these gruesome murders herself or is there someone else on the island? This is not your typical 80s slasher film. Director Fred Walton takes the usual slasher formula and spices it up with his own spin, making it much scarier and all the more thrilling. While the beginning might seem like a cliché storyline building up, viewers soon discover that it has far superior camera work to most films of its time. Also, it shows significant character development, which is usually not a focus of slasher movies. It is well-paced and does not drown itself in blood, gore, or excess nudity. Instead, it portrays an elegant twist that viewers do not anticipate with decent performances by the actors. Even though the film was categorized as such, its quality was far better than a teen slasher horror flick. If you're seeking an enjoyable evening of thrill with a surprising ending, this is a must-watch. Sleepaway Camp 1983. Shy, grumpy Angela moves in with her eccentric Aunt Martha and cousin Ricky after her parents are killed in a horrible boating accident. One summer, Aunt Martha decides to send the kids to Camp Arawak. Soon after their arrival, some shocking, violent freak accidents begin claiming the lives of the campers. Are Angela and her cousins safe? Or will they be next? With its young cast, bizarre subtext and remarkable cinematography, Sleepaway Camp is a cult classic slasher film. Although it is a typical scary movie, it has certain features that make it stand out compared to others in the genre. Director Robert Hiltzik intelligently incorporates humor into this film without undermining the horror, and its characters portray a variety of colorful traits. It has an excellent premise for a low-budget flick, and draws certain thematic resemblance from past horror slasher movies. It's a shame that this film never made it to the big screen. Overall, it presents an intriguing plot and deserves more love than it usually gets. Thank God. Hatchet 2006. A group of tourists take a boat ride to the haunted Louisiana bayous, where they discover the scary tale of local legend Victor Crowley. They learn that he was a terribly disfigured man, accidentally killed with a hatchet by his father. Soon things take a turn for the worse when their boat sinks and they are stranded in a swamp. Will the group be able to escape with their lives? Adam Green creates an old-school American slasher film with excellent special effects to portray an abundance of gore and violence in his work. Although some viewers say that it is a cliché combining 80s slasher films, he adds a 21st century touch. It showcases brisk character development and great performances by the actors. 
Its elimination of the cutaway camera technique prior to showing the kills makes it stand out in terms of cinematography and enhances viewers' thrill. It has good delivery of dialogue and evokes a certain vibe that makes it scary in a fun way. Furthermore, this film is highly praised for creating a whole new serial killer with a classic background story. Despite its cheesy beginning and graphic violence, it is an excellent slasher movie. The Prowler, 1981. Released with multiple titles, this movie begins with the return of a World War II veteran who receives a mysterious Dear John letter. Flash forward to 35 years in the future, a college graduation dance becomes the site of several murders by a man clad in uniform. Who is this mysterious man, and what is his story? The Prowler is an underrated gem from the golden age of slasher horror movies. Besides Joseph Zito's incredible direction, the film has Tom Savini to thank for its out-of-the-world special effects. It's a thrilling blend of brutal violence, a spooky, mysterious killer, and edge-of-the-seat suspense. Hardcore slasher fans highly appreciate the excess of gore in this film, but the uncut version is far bloodier than the official released version. Joseph Zito effectively demonstrates a grim and ominous atmosphere throughout the length of the film. Besides this, the actors portray decent performances, and the steady camera work focuses on all the right aspects of the film. It is a must-watch, with 89 minutes of pure thrill that will have the audience's heart racing. <laughs> Cherry Falls, 2000. A psychotic serial killer goes out on a murder rampage, targeting the virgins of a local high school. To prevent themselves from becoming targets, the teenage population decides to have a sex party so that everyone who attends can lose their virginity and not be potential victims. Besides its distinctive concept, this film develops a new category of a killer who is the unconventional blend of a ghost face and Norman Bates. Brittany Murphy blew the viewers away with her performance in this well-paced slasher. Unfortunately, it didn't receive a theatrical release. Its out-of-the-ordinary storyline would have surely appealed to a large viewership. It stays true to the slasher criteria by portraying a perfect mix of gore, nudity, and twists that blow viewers' minds. Being a movie released at the turn of the century during the horror revival era, Cherry Falls certainly created a trademark for the new generation. Finally, Jeffrey Wright's subtle style of direction combined with horror and dark comedy definitely makes this film worth watching. <laughs> Fade to Black, 1980. Shy and lonely Eric Binford, a movie enthusiast, delivers cassettes and film supplies for a living in Los Angeles. One of his major forms of entertainment is to immerse himself in fantasies involving other cinematic characters and stars. Unfortunately, he gets rejected by a Marilyn Monroe lookalike, which sends him on a killing spree where all his murders are designed in a specific, distinct manner. This is a cult classic directed by Vernon Zimmerman. It showcases Dennis Christopher in an outstanding performance of a mentally unstable loner and a remarkable storyline. Besides its violence, special effects, and cinematography, the movie especially appeals to film buffs because of its various colorful references to other movies. It is a low-budget production with one of the most innovative and creepy premises that blow viewers away with its decent execution. It contains a few stringy subplots, but its well-written script and dark humor successfully shield this. Zimmerman displays locations with a gritty atmosphere in the background that fit the movie's overall spine-chilling vibe, and successfully keeps viewers engaged with his organized drive and originality. Happy Death Day, 2017. 
A college student gets stuck in a time loop where she keeps getting killed by a creepy masked murderer. She wakes up on her birthday every morning in the same situation. Soon she realizes the only way of breaking the loop is to catch her killer. Happy Death Day is a modern-day black comedy slasher film directed by Christopher Landon. Although the premise might not seem very intriguing, it is executed wonderfully and keeps the audience at the edge of their seat despite not taking itself too seriously. The lead characters played by Jessica Roth and Israel Broussard have fantastic chemistry, with the former portraying an unconventionally cunning badass sorority girl as opposed to the typical chirpy kind. The script is smartly written, and Landon throws several curveballs at the audience throughout the film, which keeps them on their toes. Despite not having too much blood and gore, it holds the torch for a slasher movie perfectly while also throwing shade at certain 90s and 2000s films. The twist at the end shocks all viewers and puts the cherry on top of a well-executed slasher movie. Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1984. After seeing his parents being murdered before him, a young boy named Billy is brought up in a Catholic orphanage where the mother superior regularly abuses him. After becoming a teenager, he acquires a job as Santa Claus in a toy store where he sees two people having sex one day. This triggers his post-traumatic stress disorder and brings flashbacks of his parents. This turmoil leads him to become a vicious Santa serial killer. Director Charles E. Sellier Jr. has created a typical 80s B-slasher movie with good kills and sufficient nudity. It contains a frightening storyline with a remarkable lucid narrative, and Robert Brian Wilson portraying an outstanding performance. It's filled with fantastic flair and drama that fits its time and plays on an orphan psychological trauma, a deep and intriguing subject. Admittedly, it has its cheesy moments and excessive violence, but what 80s indie slasher doesn't? The film creates a large impact on viewers, which leaves them with an incredibly skewed vision of Santa in the end. Nevertheless, it is an enjoyable flick with a spooky setting and superb ambient music. It is a film that any horror fan would enjoy watching with a few beers. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.